In 1932, at the height of the Great Depression, New York Governor Franklin D. Roosevelt set forth a vision for the country. The country demands bold, persistent experimentation. It is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something. Franklin Roosevelt's call for bold, persistent experimentation would become the hallmark of his historic presidency. I think Franklin Roosevelt had a unique character where he was not afraid of failure. He was only afraid of not trying something. I have no expectation of making a hit every time I come to bat. What I seek is the highest possible batting average. Listen, as a boy, I attended the funeral of Franklin Roosevelt. I came from a poor immigrant family in upstate New York. Nothing meant more to us than Franklin Roosevelt, who saved our home, who dealt with unemployment my father. We've always held to the hope, the belief, the conviction that there's a better life, a better world beyond the horizon. So to us, living with Franklin Melano Roosevelt was a very real thing. Eleanor Roosevelt was an amazing leader who was able to take on issues of civil rights and of poverty and of rights for women, international human rights, that were so critical. And she was able to see that they were important before many other people did. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you stop to look fear in the face. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. I still get people who talk to me about how they felt a personal sense of closeness to two people who they perhaps never met. And that has to do with an identification with their values and their vision. I think Roosevelt's values today are as relevant as they've ever been. He wasn't scared to take a risk. I think that's part of what, what makes him great. There's a certain honesty in the words that he, that he spoke that is incredibly important still. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. I resonate with that saying more than any other. The Roosevelt Institute is the nonprofit partner with the FDR Presidential Library and Museum. The Roosevelt Institute is a collection of really committed people, intellectuals and activists and philanthropists and political leaders who want to make a real difference. The Roosevelt Institute is carrying on my grandparents' legacy of openness and progressivism. Part of what's important in promoting Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt's legacy is making sure that we keep on telling their story. We look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. It was the first time that an American president had ever spoken that way. It was a message heard in every corner of the world. Even today, it is so resonant. He was an American president addressing the United States Congress. Yet he was very clear that these four freedoms were not just meant for the American people, but really for the whole world. He was very clear about that, no doubt. Everywhere in the world. 3,000 miles away from where President Roosevelt delivered his famous speech, his words continue to have special meaning. Zeeland, the Netherlands, is the ancestral home of the Roosevelts, and FDR and Eleanor shared a special bond with Queen Juliana and the royal family. Queen Juliana visited the Roosevelts often. The ideals that Queen Juliana had and the ideals of FDR and Eleanor, I think they were very much the same ideals. Today, the Roosevelt Foundation in Middleburg continues to advance the vision and values of FDR and Eleanor Roosevelt. Since 1982, the International Four Freedom Awards have been presented every other year to distinguished individuals from around the world. Those are the reasons why we fought the most terrible war in human history. To secure those freedoms for our children and for generations to come. It's a very special feeling to see that there are so many people who 
are committed to those four freedoms. So many people all across the globe making impacts that really carry on the values that Franklin and Eleanor embody in their lives and their impact on the world. We cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. Throughout the world, a new generation is finding inspiration in the legacy of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. One can think of many things these two great personalities achieved. In my eyes, that would be certainly the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I don't think human rights or for freedoms are limited to the United States. It's a global thing, it's a global phenomenon. Those fundamental values, freedoms, should not be restricted by borders, should not be restricted by cultures. Everyone has the right to, to have those freedoms. The Campus Network students, 12,000 students on 100 campuses, it's unbelievable how enthusiastic they are, both about the Roosevelt legacy and about the kind of future that they as millennials are going to inherit. I really think the, the courage that they had is something that will speak to my generation and it will speak to, to generations to come. We need the courage of the young. Yours is not the task of making your way in the world but the task of remaking the world which you will find before you. May every one of us be granted the courage, the faith, and vision to give the best that is in us to that remaking. Mm -hmm.